I, I looked like a mess and I was overweight. All of my friends were the soccer players. All six packs, all really good at soccer, all generally good looking. They got all the attention of the girls. So I was like, mm, what am I going to do now? Okay. And I was like, oh, what's within my power? I can't get rid of this acne. Uh, yeah, I could go to the gym, but I'm lazy, mm. you know. I could do this and do that. I can't get rid of my hair. I tried waxing and like threading. It was just painful all the time. So I was like, okay, cool. What can I do? I can be really good at school. That's available for me. Bam, top student. Yes, now I can leverage that to get girls again. <laughs> <laughs> That's the message of this podcast. Just how do we get girls? So, <laughs> so, so then I would get the attention of the girl. So now... Because I was not a geeky nerd guy. All my friends were soccer players. I was the only academic performing person in my friend circle. But I could leverage that for my popularity or for whatever to survive in that space. How do I survive in that space? Choose something, be good at that. You know, differentiate yourself. I mean, this is just like this business 101, whatever you need to do, you know. So that was a way that I exercised that. Now, growing up and going further and going into university, starting to work, now you're around a bri. Okay, so-and-so is a marketing lead for, for a company. So-and-so has started his own business. So-and-so is working for one of these consulting firms, is earning this much amount of money. This person has traveled. This person has done that. Now you're in that space and there's, there's now there's even... Um, you looked at you look at characters, and there's alpha males. There's people that are very strong and they push their weight around. I'm not that individual. So when you see me walking into the room, you n- it, there's no fear. There's no just like oh who walked in here. But I have a couple of friends that are very strong alpha males. When they walk in, they want to be noticed. They want to push around. But when one of those males would walk into a room, I would tell myself this man is not going to dominate me. So I would notice group dynamics that the other males in which that you, this Twitter thing that you spoke about, the other male guys at this bri, they were all some... A contest. <clears throat> no, there wasn't yeah. a contest. There was almost an immediate submission to who's the strongest guy here. Who's the tallest, who's got the best physical s- space, who's doing well in their career, who's got the most money. All of a sudden, everybody's sort of in a way, and it's interesting to even see it in a club dynamic. Mm-hmm. You see that everybody knows who's paying for the bill. Ah, <laughs> da, da, right? <laughs> like, also, you know exactly who is paying for this thing. Mm. The person who's smoking the hubbly on the corner. Ah, <laughs> ah, the <laughs> Like, uh, you, uh. you'll see when they have to order, oh, should we order another bottle? They're looking <laughs> at a specific person. When they nod, then they're like, I get Then the loud mouth is there. So even in a bride dynamic, everybody is circled. And that I, I recently had a, uh, uh, with a good friend of mine. Now we've become so close because I've been able to articulate this. He stays in, he stays in Paris now. And uh, I told him that I didn't get, a, I didn't like him five, six years ago when I initially met him because he was that alpha male and he was very strong. And I was like, you will not dominate me and I'm not going to give you the same sort of delight that all of these other guys had been like, hey, what are you doing? Hey, what are you doing? And you can see the sparkle in there. These are males, even so much so like the women again are attracted to this man. So for me, I was just like in those situations, I, and I'd go away feeling like, you know, your ego is a little bit bruised. You're like, how is this guy? You know, what do I need to do to, to, to assert myself in this situation, to survive, you know? The, I think most other the people who are followers are completely oblivious to this thing. Mm-hmm. But if you're looking at it from the outside, you can see exactly what's happening in this social dynamic over here. So then it was a constant thing of going back home and being like, okay, Maybe not not so heavily conscious, but like, how do I become better? Mm-hmm. How how do I become brighter? How do I earn more money? How do I um, maintain my health? How am I funny? How am I? So it's just this drive to become better and better and better and better. But it it comes from a very negative yeah. motivation. It beca- it comes from a point of not feeling worthy, of not feeling deserving. That's where it's come from. 
or feeling inferior and for you to seek some sort of validation outside. So, and I noticed, um, so for me, what has been an incredible shift in consciousness of this and dealing with ego was to move away from my engineering career and go into comedy because that moved away from a stable salary to not knowing what you're going to do next. Like um, from a point where now your younger brothers and now this is, your younger brothers are now offering to help you financially as in daughter when you are the eldest son of a family you 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 grow up with that thought that if something goes wrong in this family it's, it's me, me. Mm. i i need to be everybody's safety net and then to interrogate what is behind that is that ego behind that is that pride behind that can you let go of that you trying you trying to do something here and all of these things are inhibiting in you achieving these great things that you want to achieve. Because if I'm to say, oh, ego and uh, my responsibility, I'll be stuck in an engineering job my whole life, doing something I'm unhappy with, earning a lot of money, yes. Yeah. Going to, but it's it's all but a also, lie. I, like what, I, I really like what you're saying because it's this, con con this constant <clears throat> constantation of the ego where you allow it to, I mean, I've, 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 there's, a, there's a thing that I've always said to myself that has never been tested. So, and what I say is, does this mean I am just saying this? Therefore, why, has, have, why have I not given myself the opportunity to have it tested? For example, uh, when it comes to, to dating, I've always said, ah, you know, like I would date, marry a woman who you know, makes you know, more money than I do, um, who has a higher social standing, whatever that means, in society and in and 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 this I've never tested this. Mm. And so the question that I ask, I usually ask myself, having not tested it, is it just a nice thing that I'm telling myself? But because my ego can might not be able to handle the reality. And I almost feel like those kinds of questions you have to ask yourself before you even find yourself in that kind of environment to see if, okay, what will happen if such and such a thing happens? Uh, did you ever find yourself, uh, like, what well, if I do stop, you know, uh, my, engineering, my engineering job and I start doing comedy and, you know, things don't go as well as quickly as I would like them to, what does that mean for my standing within myself? Not even standing in terms of what other people see, or what they think about. Yeah, because you'll be very aware of what they say. And that is not as important as what you think as a result. So how how does that work for you? This has been a lot of that mm. uh, because, yeah, going so a lot of people will be like, oh, you you know, you've got a fallback plan. Mm. You can always go, and I can walk into most engineering jobs right now. Mm. Um, and people are like, oh, you've got that sense of, so it's it's fine, you can. But for me, I don't like that word because I'm like, I, I'm doing something and I've made it. I'm, I'm making, so what I'm present to is that I'm making decisions all the time. I can decide whatever I want to do. it. And I can decide right after this podcast that I'm going to turn my LinkedIn on now. And I'm going to find an engineering job. I can do that. And then two weeks after that, I can quit that job and then go back to comment. Or I could even go and open a pizza shop. I can do whatever I want to do. So being really present that at any point in time, you can do what you want. Um, that is very empowering, as opposed to being a fiddle of people's expectations or the world's expectations. Or the worst type of expectations is your own expectations of yourself. We forget that that we are expectation-creating machines in ourselves. Okay. Uh, uh, go more into that. So now you... Because I think I get it, but I want to I really understand. You are living your life right now with all, whatever measure or whatever level of success in, in there. But there's also Kaya inside who is saying that this is not successful enough for the time 
that you have been doing what you're doing. This is not good enough. You are not this. You are not that. And those are your own experience. And sometimes they could be, sometimes people will make it an excuse, that drives me, that makes me better and whatever. But it's a miserable space to be in because you're, you're never happy. You're never collecting your flowers. You're just, yeah, but ish, I could be doing better. Yeah. The, oh, my word. The amount of times that you hear that outside there. Yeah, but ish, I should be further. Who, nobody said that. These are, these are people who have started their own businesses, got so much money and funding for this, and you're like, congratulations. Yeah, but I should have. You didn't even know further was possible, but they're <laughs> telling you that yeah. they should have been further. So there's, there's, there's a whole lot of that that happens, and that usually the worst type of expectations, you, your own expectations on yourself. Um, so being, being, being a little bit aware of all those that, and again, what I'm saying, similar to the ego, we can't get rid of these. You're going to create expectations every morning. The best thing you can do is just recognize you're creating an expectation, recognize it's an expectation, and then be like, okay, cool. Do I want to feel that way or not? Uh, close it up, bam, sort it out, move on. So it's just, it's a matter of dealing with whatever arrives at your desk. In, instead of assuming that you can clear your desk or remove all of these things, they're always going to pop up. Money is a, is a, is, has a lot of positives because money, the positives about money is that it's measurable. That's the thing. That's the only thing that makes it mind-blowing is that it's measurable. Nobody can measure your level of passion. Oh, Kaya's operating at 80% passion now. <laughs> like, ah, 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 you, can't, you can't do it. Otherwise, then you would be the most successful guy because you're operating at 80% passion. But that's not measurable. You come, I'm operating at 80%. Ah, chief <laughs> bank account. Numbers don't lie. Yeah. So usually we peg our ego to that. So your confidence is pegged to your bank balance. And it's not pegged to, I'm doing what I want. I'm doing what makes me happy. I'm making people happy. They'll be like, ah, how can you measure that? You know? You're, it's, it's pegged to all of these things that are inherently very flawed because it's so circumstantial whether you got that salary or not. Who decided you must get that salary? Well, well, well I mean, one will also look at the what you get because of it. Right. So, for example, we're talking about like, yeah, because, you know, as we're saying, like, because chicks take it. Right. So there is also that perception that everybody knows that if the dollar is there, you may have more access to uh, maybe the kinds of women you thought that you couldn't have access to. Um, and then you and that becomes important to you because that's what the end result of having the money means to you a big house big cars and therefore it's the different things that it says about you as opposed to what it really says what it, who you really are i think as a person and i think a lot of the time a person's wisdom or intelligence and kindness or whatever i say someone will be given more leeway because the serpent have they just happen to have more money Rather than okay, are you actually a compelling human being, yeah. or you are just a shiny object with money? You you know again this like even if you're talking about a compelling human being, we we we're, we're putting some sort of value on self worth. Mm. This is how I see it, because now so what me being in the space of moving from a stable salary, mm -hmm. an engineering salary, to not knowing you know whether you're going to do this, depending on younger siblings sorry but how can there be no value in self-worth because then you i am placing value and i agree so but i i don't in my mind i don't see how there can be no that's why i'm saying that this person has no self-worth and that person has self-worth there is a certain level of value there so i i i i believe that when when we are born we are born already worthy you, but the mere fact of you being born, you're born worthy. Not because you're born in Kailicha or you're born in in Constantia. But, but, okay, but is, so, isn't the process, though, of doing things also about making myself more worthy? More? I, I know, I, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's 
there's a kind of so a I discussion think, that we, we, we st- I'm also I'm, I'm wrapping this this around my head trying to figure out as well. Yeah, I'm also, I'm I asking. haven't interrogated mm. it completely. This is something that is actually very very fresh. Three weeks in mm-hmm. from a conversation I had with a good friend of mine, and when we um, so we we peg a lot of thing to. Well, our, our ego pegs a lot of things too, to, um, or our ego and our pride and our confidence, the way we carry ourselves, to these material things. So, for example, the money. So when this thing left me, I, there's some opportunity for me to actually interrogate what is the makeup on this and what is going on, you know, even for me to get onto stage with a certain level of confidence. I may be work, walking on stage because my girlfriend is the hottest girlfriend in the room. Or, we, this is what men peg think to. Girls, their ability to get girls, whether it's a pretty girl or not. Money. Um, I think girls, money. What status. Else? Status. Uh, influence. You know, how many followers you have on Instagram. These are all of these things that you can peg your confidence to. So I look at it from a risk point of view. I'm like, this is so risky. I'm pegging my whole confidence of my career, of my ability to get onto stage. I'm pegging it to all of these things that can be taken just like this. Somebody puts out an article, Fafa is an abusive partner. No access to any more hot girls ever. Gone. I can't use that to be confident. Somebody decides that they're going to steal all of my money. Bam, all the money gone. Somebody hacks my Instagram account. No more followers. Or I get banned off the profile. Somebody decides to make a campaign. Uh, somebody decides that, oh, you're, you're not credible and your status must be taken away. Some person does some campaign around you. All of these things can disappear like this. And this is what I've based my whole confidence on. So for me, I look at it from a risk management point of view and I'm like, yo, I... And I'm not saying that I, I'm not at the end of this journey because now now I'm just like playing with it. I'm just like, okay, cool. I can understand the money aspect. Mm. Yes, I need money for this and this, but I understand my relationship with money. I'm, mm. I'm understanding it all the time a bit more. But when I look at it, I'm like, these are the risks over here. I can't be pushing my weight in a room just because I can order 10 more bottles than you. Because now if my money disappears, then I can't, then what? then now I'm not relevant anymore. So I find that in this world, people have become so dependent on whatever their source of that pride and confidence is, that it, at the same time, it becomes so fickle because that can be taken away just but, like that and then you lose everything. But the crazy thing is we have seen that happen so many times to so many people where they lose that source of pride and confidence and yet we seem to lack the ability to understand that that happens and it can happen and then to continue to want to attach. Yeah, <laughs> because, because that, that is how the, the economy of the world is set up. Girls, mm-hmm. money, status, popularity. That's how it's set up. We've known this for years. And, you know, one of two things happens when somebody drops from there to there. It's either they come out with some sort of spiritual awakening and realization and they become so actually self-aware or they kill themselves and they disappear Mm -hmm. or you know they go into drugs or whatever the case is there's one of two outcomes so i'm like why can you not do this first one before you lose all of your money like do you need to lose all of your money because we don't we because we don't take that as a a meaningful measure of worth according to society mm. and that's what happens and like when when you are even in school your worth it's like did you get the highest marks did you okay great are you in the first team are you in this so your entire life from the beginning is set up on these markers of achievement and once you each time you get a certain milestone it's like ah your self-worth your self-worth and yet a lot of the times you have people who are these high achievers who still feel incredibly empty inside, despite having what seems to be everything, right? Yeah. Um, we, because I think as a society we are we don't encourage self work. 
And because we don't encourage self-work, it gets very hard to actually win ourselves from these things that can just be taken away at any moment.